this career discount that everyone talks about, I sort of think of this as this the epitome of the career discount, whether it's by FSS, by the Korean Stock Exchange, in the last 12 months even around, we're going to tackle this career discount once and for all. I actually think this is this is a great opportunity for everyone. Samsung and DJ on specifically, they have a huge opportunity here to be the catalyst for the whole economy to really unlock that career discount problem. 네, 또 여러분을 어, 찾아왔네요. 글로벌 모니터 어, 시청자 여러분 반갑습니다. 어, 저는 여러분들이 가장 음, 좋아하시는 특히 3% 중에는 뭐 제일 압도적으로 단연 어, 좋아한다고 이미 예, 정평이 나 있는 2%고요. 어, 저의 예, 오른쪽에는 어, 중앙일보의 강남규 선임 기자님. 사실상 뭐 글로벌 모니터 을 거의 이끌다시피 예, 하는 거고요. 저는 그 거인의 어깨에 올라타서 초콜릿 까먹고 있는 2%다 이렇게 말씀을 항상 드리지요. 오늘은 어, 소개해드린 대로 삼성물산 문제 많다를 주장하고 계시는 영국의 행동주의 펀드 펠리서의 최고 자산 운용 책임자를 잠시 후에 인터뷰하겠습니다. 사실 그핫 음. 이슈죠. 음. 그 다음에 이제 국내 레거스 미디어들이 인터뷰를 해, 해서 할 때나 음. 아니면 이, 이 펠리서라든지 엘리엇의 움직임을 전할 때그 음. 어떤 기성 미디어 레거스 미디어의 필터를 통해서 전달을 받지 않습니까 우리가. 그런데 예, 예. 오늘은 글로벌 모니터 음. 특히 3% 구독자분들에게 음. 이 펠리서 CIO 제임스 스미스 음. 사실은 행동주의 펀드 세계에서 한국의 행동주의 펀드 매니저들 사이에서는 꽤나 유명한 인물입니다. 음. 과거에 이번에 삼성물산에 대해서 또 어떤 문제 제기를 했지 않습니까 음. 현대자동차에도 제기를 했고 아이 이 인물이 예 그래서 음. 과거에 엘리엇 우리 행동주의 펀드 하면은 한국 내에서는 상징처럼 돼 있는 엘리엇. 엘리엇의 엘리엇이 옛날에 그 삼성 에버랜드랑 삼성물산이랑 그 합병 예, 그렇죠. 하면서 이제 이제 소송 대책에 만들면서 뭐 정유라의 말뭐뭐다 복잡한 게 있었잖아요. 그때 문제를 제기했던 야 이렇게 그렇죠. 합하면안 되지 네. 예, 라고 이야기했던 그 엘리엇에서 한국과 동아시아를 담당을 했습니다. 음. 그래서 이른바 그 바바리아 네터 게이츠 어, 문 밖에 야만이 내지는 기업 사냥꾼 음. 투기적 자본가 늘 하는 얘기지만 인터뷰는 기본 포맷상 그 음. 상대에게 말할 기회를 제공하는 겁니다. 음. 그렇다고 해서 인터뷰를 진행하는 이프로나 저가 음. 아니면 글로벌 모니 아 죄송합니다 글로벌 머니 토크가 내지는 3%가 음. 그 입장을 지지하는, 지지하는 것은 아니다. 음. 그러니 이걸 들어보고 반론이 필요하다면 삼성물산에서 언제든지 연락을 주시면 그쵸. 저희가 출연료까지는 못 드릴 수 있습니다. 왜냐하면 이분도 못 드렸기 때문에 <웃음> 균형을 맞추기 위해서 출연료는 안 드리지만 예. 네, 마이크는 열어 드리겠습니다. 아 그렇죠. 네. 어, 그리고 해석은 음. 충분히 해석은 투자자들 특히 3% 구독자분들의 음. 그 뭐랄까 어, 지식을 갖춘 음. 그런 판단으로 네, 알아서 하실 하십시오. 거다. 예. 제임스 인터뷰 응해 주셔서 감사합니다. 사실 그 굉장히 흥 호기심 대상이었습니다. 기자인 저에게는. 음. 그래서 우선 팩트 체크부터 하겠습니다. 그 최근에 이제 삼성물산에 대해서 지배구 삼성물산의 지배구조를 음. 바꿔서 지주회사로 바꾸자라고 하는 요지에 그 제안을 하셨는데 그 근거가 그거였습니다. 지금 현재 내 삼성물산의 내재 가치에 비해서 시장의 시가총액 시장 평가가 너무 저평가돼 있다고 말씀하셨는데 그 얼마나 왜 얼마나 저평가돼 있는지 음. 좀. 우리 한국의 구독자분들에게 한국 구독 한국 투자자들에게 직접 좀 말씀 좀해 주십시오. Pretty straightforward calculation. We take the the listed stakes of which there are a number as you know, Samsung Electronics, Samsung Biologics and others. We take those at market value. Um, we subtract any other any taxes that would be incurred if they sold that asset. So arguably That's a little conservative because they're not necessarily going to sell them. Um, we look at the operating businesses segment by segment using public comparable multiples and discounted cash flows. Um, and then we add on any non-operating balance sheet items, principally cash and debt. Um, and we come to what we call an intrinsic value of Samsung c t under that method 
of around 53 trillion won. And as you know, and the, the, the viewers would know, that the market stands, market cap stands at 19 or 19 and a half trillion won. We take out the treasury shares because they don't have any impact on intrinsic value. And the gap is how we get to the 33 trillion won, the $25 billion. So, you know, when you take into account that those listed stakes are near, I would say, around 75 to 80 percent of the calculation, there's not really any sort of exciting assumptions in there. It's it's pretty sort of straightforward and, and mechanical calculation. And, and kind of what that, if you sort of step back, um, what that means is when you buy a share in Samsung c and you pay 127, 128,000 won a share right now. You can think of that in a few ways. So the intrinsic value would be a 320, something like that. 340,000 won. And you can think of that in a number of ways. Either you are paying full price for the Samsung electronics stake and everything else is free, or you're paying full price for the Samsung biologic stake and everything's free, or both of those are free and you're paying a more or less, uh, or you're paying a, a, a huge discount on those and you're paying a full price for the non operated businesses. So you know, however you look at it, or alternatively, you could say, well, you're getting everything at a 63% discount. Now, look, if you if you look at Samsung Electronics stock or Samsung Biologic stock, and you look at that valuation is already cheap, and you get another 63% off, you can see how it's um, this discount is 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 uh, is is very significant, and we're able to measure that calculation over many years, which you'll have seen in the presentation. And it's never been at this kind of level. You know, normally it would be 15, 20, something like that. So it's really very, very cheap under our methodology. 저 삼성물산에 대한 뭐 저평가 주장은 뭐 충분히 주장할 수는 있다고 생각합니다만 어, 뭐 그렇게 생각하면 그동안 계속 저평가였 어떤 걸 얼굴 어떻게 하겠느냐 이제 그런 반론도 있을 수 있고 최근 들어서 특별히 더 저평가 폭이 커졌다고 생각하시는 겁니까? Absolutely, and so I say that confidently for a couple of reasons that the percentage difference between the intrinsic value and the market value has never been has never been bigger. It's sixty three percent, but based on our analysis, has never been bigger, and that's going back fifteen years or so. Um, and the intrinsic value in Korean one terms is 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 very large. So it's you know what's interesting about this company is the intrinsic value actually increases over the last six or seven years. It's been increasing at about eleven and a half percent a year every year, and the discount has been widening. So when you buy a share, you've got two interesting factors in your favor. You've got this based on history, this ongoing increase in intrinsic value. But you've got this enormous discount of 63, and we can argue whether it should be 15 or 30, whatever the number is. But at this price, it's like buying an asset worth 100 cents for 37 cents, when you know that 80 cents derives from listed holdings that the market gives you a price for every day. Uh, James? 그렇다라면은 물론 그 한국 언론에 많이 그 보도가 됐습니다. 공고 그러니까 공고를 제시했을 때 공고안을 내놓았을 때 그래도 직접 어떻게 하면 삼성물산의 그 내재 가치와 시장 가치의 차이를 좀 줄일 수 있을까요? Really, the idea that we have proposed and we've talked to the management team about, so it's not a surprise that the presentation was made at the Sony conference. It's really in three areas. It's in um, capital allocation. And what we mean by that capital allocation, as I'm sure you and, and the audience knows, it's making the best possible investment decisions you can as a management team with the aim of increasing that intrinsic value per share as much as possible over time. And while they, the company do have a capital allocation framework of sorts, which we've seen, it's very rigid. And we think that with greater flexibility, they could make better, more attractive return and investment decisions with the capital that the company has. Now, that could be a lot of things. It could be 
redeploying capital from some fine businesses that they have in leisure and tourism, for example, redeploying that into more high growth opportunities. They are investing in some really exciting high growth opportunities. And we're really keen on that. We wonder if they could do more. Um, another way of allocating capital is to buy back your shares. And I think it's sort of pretty clear to all of us when your shares are worth 100 and that's easy to calculate, and you can buy some of them back at 37, that has a dramatic impact on the value of the shares that are remaining. Um, so that's another form of capital allocation. So that's really point one, is the capital allocation concept. Um, and, you know, as I said, it's not the, the performance in terms of intrinsic value growth is bad. It's 11.5% a year over some years. We just think it could be even better. Um, and so that's the first point. And then the second point is really governance and disclosure. So and, and enhancing governance and transparency, that really is the way to regain investor trust, um, optimize decision making and ensure that the plans that they are undertaking are properly understood and valued by the market. I've talked about cancelling the Treasury stake. I think that's a real governance. That's a big one, which I think is, is really important. Um, in the area of topic two governance, more board diversity um, from a gender perspective, an industry perspective, a C-suite experience perspective. And, uh, you know, another big one in this area is, is having a single CEO. So at the moment, the company has four CEOs. And, you know, I think many of us and many of your viewers have probably experienced the complexities of having a co two co-CEOs. But when you have a co 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 CEO, you can imagine that it gets a little a little complicated. So we think that would be a really important thing to do to really, you know, as well as aligning management to shareholders. That's the really the second area. And then the third area is for them to consider in depth structural improvement to the business. Now, we know the long history of the Korean economy and how it's developed and with these chebel structures that have come into being for all kinds of reasons, whether it's tax or other reasons. And, and we're at a point now where I think rationalizing that through the creation of a, a single holding company, a formal holding company, would be a valuable thing for the company to explore. Now, this has been talked about a lot and I have no doubt you'll have other questions on it, but we think that's something that really could um, create even more transparency, improvement, efficiency, tax efficiency. And we'd love for them to reignite the deep consideration of that. And as you know, they were reviewing it in years gone by, as I'm sure you're aware. So, so that's sort of the three limbs of the idea. And we think you know, taken together, they're all sort of self-supporting and there's this sort of mutually reinforcing benefit of pursuing those alternatives that's, you know, going to be fantastic for shareholders and all stakeholders, in fact. 그 핵심은, 한마디로 음. 핵심은 삼성물산의 지배구조를 바꿔라. 음. 삼성물산의 예. 지배구조. 삼성물산의 지배구조를 바꾸라는 말은 삼성그룹의 지배구조 바꾸라는 말 아닙니까? 아, 그렇죠. 그, 그때 뭐 한번 먼저 쭤보시죠. 저 제가 질문 좀 드리겠습니다. 그 제임스 삼성물산의 지배구조를 바꾸자는 주장은 아시다시피 삼성물산은 사실상 삼성그룹의 지주회사 격이기 때문에 어 다양한 규제도 받고 있고 어, 그래서 삼성물산의 지배구조를 바꾸라는 말은 삼성그룹 자체의 지배구조를 좀 바꾸자는 것과 거의 같은 말로 들리는데 그 말은 또 조금 해석하다 보면 삼성 그룹의 그룹 해체로 해석될 수 있을 것 같고요. 그런 의미이십니까? Look, it's a complicated area. That's for sure. There's a lot of regulations, there's a lot of history and we don't dispute that. And I, I you know, I would definitely say that we don't have the internal information for obvious reasons. But we have done an awful lot of work and simulations and looking at different type of transaction structures and adjustments with our advisors. And some of those are in the deck that we presented. And, you know, we think there are ways and it may be, it does mean some uh, demerging into the financial businesses and the non-financial businesses. And, and maybe it does require a number of steps and, and um, for sure it's complicated, but sort of in our experience, just 
it, it is worthwhile pursuing these initiatives or at least doing a very deep review of what's possible and sharing the output of that transparently with all stakeholders. And, and we see a lot of benefits in achieving some greater level of, of uh, simplicity. There are companies who've achieved it. It's some years now, but LG Corp is a good example where you get a cleaner, a cleaner structure out and it becomes easier to, to value and understand the tax sort of costs in paying dividends from subsidiaries to parents can be positively impacted by doing it. And so, you know, we, we, we think it is something that is, um, is worth doing. And actually, I don't think the cost is going to be prohibitive based on our analysis, uh, separating the financial businesses from non-financial businesses as we've envisaged, I, I think can be a very positive thing for, for Korea, but for the group. 삼성물산을 지주회사로 전환을 할 경우에 여러 가지 물론 그 뭐랄까 관리가 하는 한 어떤 컨트롤 하는 부분도 있겠지만은 어쩌면은 이재용 회장이 삼성전자를 지배할 수도 없고 음. 삼성그룹의 전체 골격이 뼈대가 흔들리는데 이 0.62% 지분밖에 안 가지고 있는 그 행동주의 펀드의 제안을 그 이재용 회장이 받아들일 수 있을까요? I'm aware of that and that's been a consistent theme and I think it's a very valid concern and I I just want to be clear we absolutely favor the continued um tenure and premiership of the family they've built a fantastic business here I mean this is an incredible business Samsung Electronics in particular um this is something we think is a win-win that will not lead to any risk of loss of control for Lee Jae-yong. And, you know, look, if you, what we're actually asking for is deep, do the deep work, do the analysis, be transparent, share it with stakeholders, and let's all work together to figure out the best path forward. Because our sense is this is something, if it can be achieved, is is a win-win for all stakeholders and it's worth it's worth the effort. 그 삼성의 현재 지배 구조가 어떤 문제를 갖고 있고 그 문제 제기에 대해서는 매우 타당하다고 생각합니다만 다만 이제 우리나라 그 이른바 재벌 기업들의 지배 구조는 사실상 그 정관계의 암묵적 지지 그리고 한국 국민들의 암묵적 지지 속에서 유지되고 있다고도 보여질 수 있습니다. 왜냐하면 우리 국민들의 판단이 Yeah. 그 특히 이제 외국계 펀드가 우리 대기업을 공, 뭐라고 하면 야단쳐도 우리 국민들이 야단치지 당신들이 왜 나서냐라고 해서 어 그냥 국민과 대기업이 붙으면 어 그건 국민 편이지만 외국인과 대기업이 붙으면 대기업 편이 되는 이른바 그런 한국적인 국민 정서의 지지도 있습니다. 어 이런 상황을 아신다면 이게 행동주의 펀드가 이런 제안을 했다고 음, 그렇게 바뀌어야지 하지 않을 수 있을 텐데 어, 뉘앙스가 잘 전달될 수 있을지 모르겠습니다. 뭐 그게 바뀔 수 있을 거라고 보십니까? This career discount that everyone talks about. I sort of think of this as this the epitome of the career discount. And you know in 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 numbers we've talked about we call it the the sort of value gap in this case but um, it's You know, if we look at MPS, for example, they have 140 trillion won of holdings that are worth 0.9 times book, right? Now, those same investments in Japan would be worth 1.4 times book. And so, you know, when you look at that and you look at the number of positive comments that have been made, whether it's by FSS, by the Korean Stock Exchange in the last 12 months, even around, we're going to tackle this career discount once and for all. I actually think this is... This is a great opportunity for everyone to really be a leader in using this to harness that process. Um, and, and that's before we sort of, you know, there's an argument that Korea with a little bit more growth, a little bit more development requires a better model than Japan. So it could be even more. But I don't think we're, I don't think we're in a sort of contrary stance to many of the stakeholders. Regulates. I think we're actually all on the same page. And what's really interesting to me, actually, is, you know, despite the history and the challenges of the last sort of eight years or so, um, Samsung and Lee Jeon specifically, they have a huge opportunity here, a huge opportunity 
to be the catalyst for the whole economy to really unlock that career discount problem. And that's why, you know, I, I, I sort of feel like we're, we're in line with what uh, all these institutions want. And to suggest that, um, to suggest that whether it's regulators or policymakers or the Samsung group, that they're not in favor of that journey is to say that they don't care about shareholders. They don't care about value. They don't care where the value gap is. And I just, I don't think that's the case. I think, um, I think these folks care deeply about achieving the best outcome for shareholders. And that's you know, what I think is one of the most interesting aspects of this situation. 일본의 사례를 말씀하셨습니다. 근데 사실 그 2차 세계 대전 야 죄송합니다. 2차 세계 대전 이후 한일의 한일의 어, 야, 두 나라의 기업 지배 구조는 거의 비슷했습니다. 사실은 컬처도 내부의 어떤 뭐랄까 서열 중심의 문화도 비슷했고요. 근데 최근에 어떻습니까? 일본의 기업 지배 구조라든지 경영의 투명성이 어떻습니까? 많이 좋아졌습니까? 어떻습니까? Look, I think what's really interesting in Japan, and as you would be aware, the number of authorities in Japan, principally the Tokyo Stock Exchange, have really, are really pushing and encouraging companies to look at your business, look at your returns, and where their valuation is at a discount to intrinsic value. Um, you know, that's a symptom of something needing to be fixed. And they're really pushing companies to improve returns on equity, to improve valuations, and, and it's working. And consensus is really changing. And, and what's most interesting, arguably, is that this is happening without law change. It's not there's been a bunch of regulations and laws passed which are causing this to happen. It's J Japan is sort of, the, it, it's, it's creating this dynamic without that. And, and I think it's very positive. I see no reason, frankly speaking, why a similar thing can't happen in Korea. It would be wonderful to see some of these regulatory authorities coming together and looking at that case study in Japan and just saying, you know, we can do this too, and we should do this too. And I, you know, I, I think that's something that whether it's the NPS's beneficiaries or retail shareholders directly is a number of your audience that they are and will increasingly demand for this kind of improvement. And um, I, I think it can lead to, to real change. And just sort of stepping back to this situation again, um, what's, what's most interesting on top of that is the valuation. So as I said to you, this company, if they just do what they've done in the past, the intrinsic value will grow 11.5%. We think they can do better. Right. But if they do that for the next three years and the discount goes from 63. So, so, so the discount doesn't change. Intrinsic value increased by 11 and a half percent. You'll make an 11 and a half percent return per annum. If the discount goes to 50, that return doubles. If it goes to 30, it triples. If it goes to 15, which was the average before the Chael Samson CNT merger, it quadruples. And you're talking mid 40s percent annual returns over the coming three years. So these dynamics are starting to change. We think there's great capacity for them to continue to change. We think it's a huge opportunity for all of the different stakeholders. We think there's a fine case study available in Japan. And this band evaluation is phenomenally cheap as well. So you can see how we've got these many things coming together, which is why when the Sony people asked us, well, would you like to come to our conference? But you've got to do your absolute best idea. You have to present your best idea. This was the one we picked. And, you know, we always think in a situation like that, best to make your views transparent and public. So we did. And um, I, I think the value unlocking opportunity here is is tremendous. And um, kind of bigger than any single in vogue industry that folks may be looking at, EV batteries or whatever it is, I think this situation, the value unlock is, is tremendous. And if you look at the value that can be unlocked for NPS, it's probably nearly three, three trillion won. You imagine what that is per NPS beneficiary, probably 13, 14 million won per account holder. And these, these are big numbers. And so 
we think everyone should be aligned to to improving um, on that basis. Uh... 제임스 그 여, 이력을 보니까 엘리엇에서도 오래 일하셨던데 당시에 엘리엇은 한국 정부를 상대로 소송도 했습니다. 어, 이 지금 일하시는 조직인 펠리서와 어, 과거에 일하셨던 엘리엇의 이른바 스타일, 철학, 전략 등에서 혹시 차이가 있다면 어떤 차이를 느끼고 계십니까? It, you know, as, as you have garnered from the press, I worked at Elliot for a long time. A lot of the team, p a l i s e r worked at Elliot. for a long time. I um, have great respect, as we all do, for that institution. It's a fine firm. And, um, you know, providing a sort of detailed comments on that firm is a little, a little difficult and probably inappropriate. What I would say that firm really prides itself on is there's a, a thoroughness and attention to detail in terms of financial analysis, due diligence, operations, uh, all kinds of analysis that the work they do is really absolutely best in class. And, and that's something that definitely we share as a philosophy doing really thorough, good work. You know, a lot of folks, when they put a presentation out in the public domain, it, it wouldn't be 70 pages like ours. It wouldn't have you know, real depth of analysis because we want to check things thoroughly and be providing accurate information. So, so there's definitely a, a similarity there. Um, and look, you know, what I can tell you about Palliser is we take a long-term long view. You know, we're value-oriented. We do like situations where we think we can propose something sensible that works for everyone. And, um, you know, a, a good example would be the Keisei Railway case in Japan, which has been in the public domain. And, you know, we think that the phrase we use for that one is it's an all around win. That what we've put forward, it's a win for shareholders. It's a win for regulators. It's a win for employees. It's a win for all the different stakeholders. And, and I think this situation is very similar. It's not just a win win. It's an all around win um, for all stakeholder groups. So it's probably not a perfect answer to your question. And I do have some restrictions as it relates to Elliot, but um, Look, I mean, I think this is a, an excellent company. We see great prospects. We've put forward some sensible ideas. We think the process has already begun. This is such an opportunity for Korea, for the different arms of government, for, for Samsung and, and, and for Lee Jae-yong to be a leader and, and catalyze the ultimate fix to the Korea discount. And that's what you, we think is, is most exciting in this situation. 어, 제임스 사실 한국은 행동주의 펀드가 이제 시작인 듯 합니다. 제가 이 인터뷰 직전에 한국의 행, 행동주의 펀드 매니저하고 이러저러한 얘기를 나눈 적이 있습니다. 음. 근데 제임스 스미스와 인터뷰 한다 그러니까 어, 궁금해 하던데 어떻게 그 한국의 행동주의 펀드 매니저들에게 하시고 싶은 말씀 약간의 음. 코멘트 네. 한 말씀 부탁드리겠습니다. 한국의 동병상련 친구들에 <웃음> 대하여 <웃음> 네. I mean, first of all, you thank your friends, the local activists, because I think they are a fantastic force for improvement in the Korean market. And one of the things that, of course, we as one of a number of foreign investors can make views heard, but when you see ideas resonating with local shareholders who have always a better understanding of the local nuances, that's really positive. So I think it's really encouraging to see these folks who, you know, evidently you're, you're friendly with being active in the market. Um, but in terms of how does this, how do we take this forward is I think your question, how do you make, make a, a change here? And I think the most important thing to stress is that from our perspective, this is something that is best done collaboratively. And so we've had a number of meetings and sessions and, you know, we've been told that that dialogue is going to continue and that it's a, a, an open and, and, and respectful one. Mm -hmm. And we're here for the long term. We're going to be in this. We've been following this stock, as you know, for decades. Um, and, um, you know, we're going to be in this for a long term. So, you know, it's not our sort of, we don't, we don't think kind of necessarily there's a particular event of, putting resolutions into a meeting or something that is the best way to make something happen. I think engagement with other stakeholders locally, policymakers, regulators, and so on, um, I think um, 
is is something that's going to be helpful and that we're going to we're going to continue with. And look, I think you know it's, it is important to remember now that these measures we've proposed they're they're relatively straightforward and they are really sensible. And you can make an argument that a number of them have already begun. There have been a number of comments from Lee Jae-yong, for example, suggesting more investment in high growth areas to bring the bit to bring the business forward. And so, you know, is there a particular action that we're going to take in the very near term that's going to make the difference and transform the engagement? And not particularly engagement takes so many forms and every situation is a little different. But, you know, we are here for the long term. We have enjoyed the engagement through multiple meetings and interactions so far. Um, we're told that's going to continue. We, we look forward to continuing that and expanding it to include some of the major uh, stakeholders and regulators in the market as well. And I think, you know, this is something we have been doing in other markets like Japan. So we've got a very interesting investment in a railway company there, which we've been invested in for a couple of years now. And we've taken that same approach and, um, you know, where you find good businesses, um, this approach does tend to work. 네, 어, 인터뷰에 응해 주셔서 고맙습니다. <목소리> 어떻게 들으셨어요? 1980년대 금융사적 이름이 1980년대 적극적인 행동주의 펀드 기업 네. 사냥 음. 그 다음에 행동주의 펀드하고 전혀 다른 별, 다, 별도의 범주지만 그이 어떤 적대적 인수합병이 이제 본격화되는 게 1980년대였지 않습니까 그때 가장 중요한 게 지분을 확보하는 겁니다 네. 심지어는 그 위임장을 확보를 해서 음, 이사회에서 예. 그 M&A에 대한 지지를 이끌어내는데 그때부터 나타난 언어 그들의 언어가 그런 사냥꾼들이라든지 합병을 추진하거나 아니면 은 이런 음. 행동주의 펀드의 그 어, 언어가 이, 상당히 정치적입니다 <웃음> 아니 그러니까 그 음. 어, 일반 주주들의 동의도 마음도 사야 되고 그래서 음. 호소하고 네. 뭐 그런 예. 식이죠. 음. 펠리서의 제임스 스미스 CIO의 지금 말씀을 음. 들어보니까 지난 최근에 10년간 이 회장의 업적 음. 어 그다음에 기여 그런 거에 대한 이렇게 긍정적인 멘트도 넣고 <웃음> <웃음> 말씀을 하시고 네. 그러면서 음. 어떤 이해관계 이해관계자 음. 아들에게 마음을 사기 위한 예, 음. 이해관계자들의 이 음. 좋은 방향으로 가보자라고 네. 얘기를 했습니다. 네. 저도 그 행동주의 펀드들의 책임자들을 가끔 만나 보면 음. 그분들도 알고 있어요. 어, 네. 이거는 어, 결국은 정부가 많은 것을 결정할 수도 있고 이, 이 결과에 그쵸. 대해서. 그 정부가 결정하는 많은 기준은 이런 그 경영권과 관련한 도전에 대해서 국민들이 어떻게 판단하느냐가 중요하다. 그렇죠. 실제로는 어 초기에도 말씀드렸습니다만 기존 우리나라 기업들은 어, 미디어 입장에서는 광고주의고 행동주의 펀드는 사실은 갑툭 튀잖아요. <웃음> 그러다 보니 미디어가 어느 편에 설지는 대충 정해져 있긴 한데 <웃음> 예. 그런 불리한 지형을 극복하려면 미디어도 어느 한쪽에 설수 없도록 예. 국민 여론이 어, 이른바 그 갑툭 튀 행동주의 펀드에 대해서 최소한 유출을 예. 가능하면 좀 우호적이면 좋다는 걸 알고 있어서 예. 이제는 표현이나 이런 거에 대해서 매우 신중하게 국민들의 마음이 이 흔들리지 음. 않게 신경을 쓰는 것 같긴 하더군요. 네. 그리고 아까 <웃음> 삼성물산 얘기를 하셨는데 어. 참 엘리엇 한국의 그 엘리엇 대리인들이 꽤 있습니다. 음. 변호사도 있고 음. 언제든지 이 글로벌 머니토크에는 멍석이 펴져 있으니 음. 나와서 네. 입장을 얘기하시라. 네. 언제든지. 저희는 항상 마이크는 어, 공짜로 빌려드립니다. 그렇죠. 저희가 판단해서 어 이분은 얘기는 들어봐야지 음. 하는 게 있으면 왼쪽이든 오른쪽이든 뭐 다. 나중에 엘리엇 인터뷰가 성사됐을 때 음. 한국 법무부 입장에 대해서도 충분히 마이크를 드리겠습니다. 네. 오케이. 드리겠습니다. 예. 여러분들을 위해서 항상 열심히 일하는 글로벌 머니톡 어, 여기서 오늘은 마무리할 겁니다. 다음 만날 때까지 저희들은 또 여러분들에게 얼마나 더 유익한 인터뷰를 찾아서 전해드릴까 고민하지 않겠습니까? 예. 예. 그러니까 여러분들도 다음번에 저희를 만날 때까지 내가 글로벌 머니톡을 위해서 무엇을 할수 있을 것인지에 대한 생각을 어, 하시다가 오시면 좋겠습니다. 감사합니다. 네. 감사합니다.